Okay, so day three of the rum triptych. That's right. I just like saying the word triptych. Admit it. It's kind of a fun word. So, day three, the last day of the rum reviews, will be followed by a fourth day, a fourth episode, a summary of those three. Now, the question is, does that create a logic contradiction? You've got a triptych, which is three, and yet you have four episodes. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. This is the kind of math problem, the kind of abstract math consequences that Sir Duke truly loves. There you go. Okay, so the last rum is the captain. Captain Morgan. The guy with that bad knee. You know, he's always got it up on a barrel. Not sure what happened there. Could have been an alligator, but that's a different story. So we're going to skip that one. The captain is included due to the fact that as a youth, this was the rum they had at every bar. Not saying I was in a lot of bars. Well, okay, I'm not saying I wasn't either. But it was there just the same. I was not a rum drinker, although as I recall... Calta de Swan enjoyed the island liquor quite a bit. But the captain smiling back at me as I lolled on the stool in the bar is a memory I do have. So he's in. And let's say this, ye swabbies, and should you have an issue, lest it be known that the Pequod and the mighty white whale may have a word of a word on this particular topic. And with that, before we go to the review, I think it's only appropriate to say farewell and adieu, you old Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. Okay, okay, on to the review. Ahem. Captain Morgan states, the captain has long been sailing the seas with one flag hoisted up for the world to see. But the real figurehead of his fleet, is Captain Morgan original spiced gold. Okay. All yours. Brooke? Oh, okay. They're claiming a secret recipe of adventurous spice and flavors, with notes of rich vanilla, brown sugar, dried fruit, that creates a taste and color as rich as a pocket full of gold. Dubloons? Hoist the mantle, I guess? Day three of the triptych. And today, we're introducing Captain Morgan's Spice Room. Arthur and Brooke were very clear on Captain Morgan's. And I have to state a little background. It's the first rum I heard of in my youth. And that's a tortured youth, let me be clear. We have a drink. We have a beautiful day. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the third day of perfect weather. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. It's beautiful. All right, let's see how it goes in our 80-degree cloudless sky. Oh. Oh. I must say, this is completely different. I taste vanilla. Of all the things, I taste vanilla in the Coca-Cola. Wow, a completely different drink in the sense of three drinks in three days, all made with essentially the same base concept of ingredients. This is uh, muted sweet because you can taste such a strong taste of vanilla. It doesn't leave an aftertaste, smooth, and none of these burn. Oh, yes. So, this is, now we're on a patio drinking a a vanilla-flavored rum and coke. Visions just jump into your head. All right. Day three, three good days. 
Let's see how that rates out. Okay, so we're back in from the patio. And as you saw, starting way back with Brooke and Arthur, and then proceeding through the review on the patio, and then into the actual review of the drink, it's vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. Rum and Cokes and Captain and Cokes have existed forever. So I'm going to assume that the 2012 introduction of Vanilla Coke was a case of Coke chasing that and producing it without alcohol. I don't know. I guess I'll never know because Vanilla Coke has been discontinued. It is what it is. Anyway, our summary's coming up for the fourth episode. I hope you'll come back for that because if you like what you see, we would like to see you tomorrow.